Right. Hey everybody, um, I'm just going to make a series of videos to uh, take you through uh, what I think is a pretty interesting simulation. Um, so I'm going to do this in Python with PyGame, and you know you can feel free to kind of follow along as as we go. Uh, and so I wanted to show you the kind of the finished product. Um, you know, I got this idea from a Washington Post article um, where they ran this, and they are talking about um, social distancing. And, um, you know, so the red is is the person that's infected and you can kind of see how the uh, virus is spreading to other people. Um, the dots that are moving are uh, all all people who are not social distancing. And then the dots that are that are at rest are people that are social distancing. Um, red is sick. Blue is healthy and white is sorry. White is healthy and blue is recovered. So they've had the illness. Um, and so you can kind of see how this works with social distancing um, versus uh, if we change a parameter here um, to maybe turn off social distancing, um, we can see how much more quickly the virus spreads. Um, it's just, there's a lot, a lot more collisions that are happening and almost everyone is infected right away. Um, so I think it's a pretty interesting uh, simulation, uh, and you kind of can see that. So um, what I want to do is kind of take you through the whole thing. So, um, and and kind of take you through the process of how I designed this as well. And uh, so the first thing I thought of is like, what what classes would I would I want to write for this? And so uh, I, I it seems like we just really need one class which would represent a person um, and the person's behavior. All right, so I made a little Python module here, and I'm going to go ahead and create a Python file for my person class. Um, actually, I'm going to lowercase this module. All right, and in the person class, um, we're basically going to uh, just start with a a couple main things. Um, the first is is um, I know that I'm going to want to have a couple a couple things to represent my person. So what what types of things uh, do I need to represent my person? Uh, so in this case, uh, you know I have my constructor here that I'm that I'm building, and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well I, I'm probably going to want to construct the person at a specific x and y. Um, and that's going to be randomized, but I could randomize it in here inside the constructor. But the reason I'm going to make these parameters is because I don't want the um, objects to be able to spawn on top of each other. And so I want to uh, have them so that the uh, the X and Ys are all unique when they initially start. And that, that way we don't get objects spawning on top of each other. And so I need to pass these in as parameters. Um, the other, another field I'm going to have is is a status. And the status is either going to be um, like healthy uh, recovered or, or sorry, sick or recovered. So you're going to have one of those three statuses at any time. And then um, the other variable I'm going to add in here is social distancing. And so social distancing means that the player will have a zero velocity, essentially. Right. Um, the x and y velocities I can randomize within this frame. The radius I can set to a, a value. I'm going to make all the circles the same size, but you could certainly make that a the parameter as well. Um, so if you want to, you know, pause the video now and maybe start to initialize some of the variables and, um, you know, see how you would do this. Uh, you know, go ahead and do that now. And if not, um, you know, you can just continue watching and, uh, and I will go through with you. So um, you want to make sure you set each of the variables that are defined here. So self X, self Y, um, status, and social distancing. Um, what else do we need? Well, we need a, it's a, we're going to represent them with circles. So let's make a radius and I'm just going to set a, a value of six for right now. Um, we can adjust this later on, certainly. 
Uh, what else? We want to um, have a velocity in the x and the y. And I'm just going to uh, initialize these to 0. And I'll explain why I do this in a little bit. Um, and then we'll also have this field turn sick, um, which will will count how many turns that player has been sick. So every player will start initially as healthy, um, except for patient zero. So that's why I do need this parameter here. I could make this an optional parameter, um, but I do need to uh, make patient zero the first sick one, and then everyone else can start as healthy. Um, so if you're wondering why I didn't just put status equals healthy, um, it's so that we can set per patient zero. Um, okay. Uh, what else? Uh, so now what we're going to do is we are going to check to see, are, is this person participating in social distancing? Um, if they're not social distancing, then what we should do is we, we should uh, give them a random velocity. If they are social distancing, then we'll just keep their velocities at zero. So we don't need to add anything else. Uh, and so we'll just do VX uh, equals a random. We're going to do uh, a random dot uh, uniform so that it's a, uh, a random. It gives us a little bit more variation. Um, as opposed to making it an integer. Um, we need to make sure we import random here. All right, so I've got that going on. And I'm going to do the same thing with uh, VY. All right. Now, uh, what, what happens if we get a, the number of zero? Um, it's unlikely with uniform that we're going to get exactly zero. Um, but, you know, we and we could even put this within a... Um, a sort of a range so that it's like if it's less than 0.5 and you know make, make sure that the random uniform doesn't give us a range that's uh somewhere between you know maybe negative 0.5 to 0.5 so maybe we want if they're going to have a speed they have to have like a minimum speed of of 0.5 or something like that uh just so we don't get you know 0 0.001 or something like that as a random a random speed um because that would essentially just be zero all right uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use a little while loop for this. So while um, self vx is, sorry, while uh, 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 is less than self dot vx, less than uh, 0 0.5, and negative uh, 0.5, less than self dot vy, um, less than 0 0.5. So if both the velocities are are within this range of zero, negative 0.5 to 0.5, then what we're, we'll do is re-random uh, those, those velocities. So, um, this is just a nice little thing. You don't really need to add this in, but this will just prevent us from getting zero velocities from those that aren't, aren't practicing social distancing. Um, so it'll give us a little bit more range there. Um, at this point, you know, if you wanted to uh, make these variables, that might be a good thing. Um, you know, it's not always a great idea to put constants in. Um, so maybe you, you make these, um, you know, fields that the person knows. Um, so maybe one, one we could call would be min movement. Um, and we'll set that to 0.5. And, and so then we can just replace the 0 0.5 with this variable min movement. And that way, you know, if we want to change this later, we can. So this is always a good coding practice for for uh, for those of you guys who um, want to want to keep doing this. Uh, you know, it's something to get used to. Uh, anytime you see a constant, uh, you just want to be careful about about that and may, maybe try to make it a, a variable. Makes it a little bit easier. Uh, same thing with this. Um, instead of instead of negative five to five, maybe we have like speed like max speed, um, and, and then we can set that to five. And then we can go from negative max speed to max speed. Something like that. All right, uh, again, just little quality of life things to make our code more flexible 
later on. All right, so th that's about it for the constructor. We might add a couple other things in here uh, later on. Um, but my rationale, you can see now my rationale for some of this stuff, uh, the social distancing being a Boolean will help us to control whether the VX and VY should ever be anything but zero. Um, the status will help us control um, who's getting infected later on. The turn sick will help us to recover them. And then uh, finally, uh, we're just going to next write a move function, a basic, a really basic move function for this. Um, and so if you want to pause the video and try and write this function, uh, go for it. And then I'll uh, write it here. All right. And so if you were able to do that, uh, you can check your, your move function against mine. Uh, so we have def move self. And then here, all, all, all the movement function is, is just updating uh, x and y. based on their um, new velocities. Now, one thing we could make sure of, like with, since we're adding collisions and later, depending on how we do this, these collisions, we, we might want to be careful in terms of like, what if, um, what, what if our, our VX and our VYs uh, are changing, um, even if we're practicing social distancing. So let's, if, if we do certain collisions where the momentum transfers between the objects, uh, then we want to just make sure that that the object that's social distancing is not is not ever moving. So one thing we can do to to just make sure uh, that someone who's social distancing never moves is we could just add in a a little check here. If they're not so social distancing, then they'll move. But if they are, then they won't. Uh, again, this is unnecessary if you write your code. Um, and, and make sure that VX and VY never are set to anything but zero if social distancing is true. But it's, uh, you know, a, just a little quick uh, safeguard against um, a, a potential error that could come up later. So, um, all right, so we're going to wrap up video number one with that. Um, we just have the basic person class, and I'll continue with uh, a little bit more uh, of this in the next video.